Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We found this amazing mountain yesterday and we were supposed to do an intro for it, but we said, let's just do it when we get back because we thought, you know, this is not an explored mountain at all. We didn't get coordinates for this and we didn't do any research on it, basically. We were driving past it, I saw it and I thought, there's cactus up there. So we literally pulled over to the side of the road, walked a couple of miles into the nothingness and found this. To make the story short, we ended up spending three hours here and it got dark, so we weren't able to make the intro. But we're definitely gonna show you what we shot yesterday because it is truly amazing. This little mountain is spectacular. It's not even half a mile wide. I must have seen a thousand Lofofora plants here easily. It's funny because on the last video, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out because it was also really, really interesting. I was talking about how we haven't found any dense populations of Lophophora williamsii in habitat. We've only seen Lophophora fritii. And I guess the universe delivered because on this mountain, we found as many Lophophora williamsii as I have personally seen in any other location that I have been to. So I hope you guys enjoy this mountain because it's truly amazing. We found a whole bunch of not only big mature Lophophora plants with a beautiful, beautiful form here, but they're also very, very blue, almost white. And the interesting thing about this mountain is that we found a lot, a lot, a lot of seedlings. And I'm talking about more than, I don't know, I didn't count them, but you're gonna see how, just how many of them. And not only Lophophora williamsii, but we also saw a lot of Echinocactus horizontalonius that seem to be in this sort of little neighborhood all on their own. We're gonna show you that as well. We found some Echeveria succulents, which they're not really my cup of tea, but I know some of you guys love them. We saw an amazing diversity of not only Lophophora plants, but a whole bunch of other genera of cacti here. We saw a bunch of Opuntias as well. You can probably see some in the frame, but those guys are everywhere. So I don't personally get excited over them because they usually tear my arms and legs apart with their spines and their glockids. But you know, they're here. We saw maybe seven or eight different genres of cacti on this mountain. Some of them are getting ready to bloom, but yesterday the weather was a little overcast. And another interesting thing about this mountain in particular is that most, if not all the plants here are 100% exposed to sunlight. So it's always interesting to see, especially the very tiny Lophophora seedlings, 100% exposed to sunlight because it's hard to imagine that such a small, quote unquote, fragile plant can take such a harsh environment. But hey, they're here. So come along with us. I hope you enjoy this mountain. It's amazing and I hope it stays here forever. So let's go. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome. I hope you like cacti. We make nothing but content related to cacti and succulents in both cultivation and in the wild to try to highlight the importance of their conservation. Remember, take nothing but pictures from nature. Seeing so many different species of cacti together in such a small space was pretty crazy. But the most incredible thing by far was seeing almost all the species we found living vertically in the fine cracks of this stone wall. Cacti have to be the most adaptable and versatile plants of all because they chose to live in the most difficult environments of all. Whenever we see a masterpiece like this one in nature, it's important to remember that each member of these slow-growing plant communities is vital for the survival of the whole. That's why it's crucial to leave these places exactly as we found them, never taking or leaving anything behind. 
take only pictures of nature. Among these individuals, we could observe that their root systems have created a small mesh over the rocks, collecting mineral fragments and microscopic organic matter that enable future generations of plants to germinate. Each one contributes to the survival and regeneration of the entire ecosystem. I always say that seeing seedlings or baby cacti is my favorite part of exploring these remote places. And in this mountain, I had the pleasure of seeing new generations of every single species we encountered, which is not only beautiful to see, but also a very good sign of the health of this locality. The protective mesh created by the roots of all of these plants isn't just limited to the small cracks between the rocks, it extends over the entire mountain, slowing down the destructive effects of erosion which become even more severe in environments such as these where water is extremely scarce. Although deserts may seem empty at first glance, getting closer to these wonderful places allows us to appreciate the incredible biodiversity and the multitude of organisms living in them. They are ecosystems rich in life and resources that we still don't know or fully understand, and therefore they must be protected. I hope that by making these small documentaries highlighting the beauty and richness of our deserts, and emphasizing the importance of their conservation, we can do our small part in the effort to save these wonderful plants. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so I can see you on the next one.